Hello guys, I'm so glad to be here and today we're gonna talk about the second and compare binaries to analysis when we're talking about the more analysis, right? My name is Felipe Pires and this is my contact in the Twitter, GitHub and Medium. I use a lot the LinkedIn profile, uh, not profile actually, in uh, social medias. If you have any doubts or any questions, please this is my contact and I am available to talk to you, right? So, uh, some information about me. I have been working in a hacker security as a global research manager, right? This is the Brazilian company. I am a founder this course is about a malware analysis fundamentals. And now, not actually not now, I started to, to work in, in this company, Zoop Innovation. I am a responsible to Zap, Zoop security labs i am a research and security manager as well uh, i'm responsible to provide many research in, in antivirals and many different sensors of security products right and this is a brazilian company as well and um, this is a like a software house responsible to create a software apps and applications and as you can imagine the kind of softwares and apps, right? So here's some uh, papers or not papers. In this case, it's, it's article that I was uh, wrote. Yeah, I published it in a Pentesi magazine, a forensic magazine, and the, the cybersecurity hub as well. This is not a you know my idea here is not to hack the NSA, NSA or FBI or you know Microsoft. Uh, my idea when I when I publish this kind of articles is to provide some basis, you know. So my idea is to talk about the basis, what the fundamentals uh, is important when you talk about the security products or or more analysis or maybe thread hunting or maybe up and testing. So we need to know about the basis. It, during this our conversation now, I will explain more about this, right? So here are not. Uh, uh, another papers that I was uh, wrote, right? And you can read uh, in my social medias or this uh, magazine as well, right? So uh, the first step that we need to do when you talk about the more analysis to identify, right? Uh, this is that is called identification, right? Because we have the artifact. We don't know if the artifact is malicious or not or not. We need to understand if if this if this malicious or this artifact actually is malware software malicious or moldoc document malicious right this is the first and very important uh, part right after that you can choose what the kind of analysis you will chose if you use static analysis or dynamic analysis analysis right after that after you realize or you executed it you can prepare a report right you actually, this kind of step it's very important because you need to present it to the your manager, your tech lead, your coordinator, maybe, and you can prepare prepare many of these uh, informations that you analyzed it before, right? After that, you can improve your security defenses mechanism, right? This is the main point here, because for example, if you try to uh, explore uh, any antivirus in your environment, right? You maybe you can try uh, explore explore many you know DLL, DLL injections. You can try using another different malware or try or maybe using some exploits to try explore the, your uh, antivirus solutions. This is a very interesting point. You can present this to the our or not our your manager or your tech lead, and when you find any. Uh, for example, vulnerability, maybe bugs, maybe, maybe uh, I don't know, filers in your software, in your security software, for example, you can improve, you can uh, uh, adjust many settings inside your platform, right? And after that, you can prepare the beautiful world has no like a cyber threat intelligence or CTI, right? You can build it. You can build this kind of intelligence in your company. I know maybe you don't have a big company, you have a small company, but you can work uh, with, for example, IOCs, uh, indicator of compromise, or maybe you can work with uh, 
maybe uh, EOA or EOA. It's like an indicator of attack and you can build it, right? This is the mainly point when the, we talk about the more analysis because, you know, when you mention more analysis, maybe the people uh, that was watching me now maybe are thinking, for example, okay, if I have this kind of knowledge, maybe I can work in a SOC or maybe in a support, but you can uh, receive this kind of knowledge and you can improve it. it. You can work, for example, a thready hunting or thready hunter, a person that uh, realize or execute this kind of work, right? Or you can maybe uh, do this research has uh, has me, for example, because I am creating this in my uh, my company now and in HackerSec and uh, Zoop Innovation as well. And my idea to put this kind of uh, professional guy, this is the Mauer Hunter in a top of the tower, right? The idea is to put in the research guy in the top of the tower. This is my idea, you know, because when you talk, uh, for example, with many companies in the world, for example, uh, the, 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 this kind of person or this, this you know, this is a skill is it's not clear if this guy is working with a SOC, with a SASAR, uh, in a, in a, for example, in, in a CSIRT, or maybe in a, in a support team, or maybe in a red team or, or, or blue team. You know, it's, it's maybe a confusion in many companies. So this is my idea to put in the top of tower because this guy have a defensive, you know, a sensey, but the think, the mind, it's totally offensive. That's my idea, right? And after that, you can create the uh, uh, the strengthening, yes, the, your cyber resilience, because the threats are changing all the time, right? This is maybe a, 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 not a life cycle of the moral analysis, but it's a, 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 a suggestion, right? It's one idea, you know, that's my suggestion for you, right? So the first step is static analysis. It's very simple. Usually this is the first step, use it by uh more analysts yes because this is usually it's described of the process of the, the the some programs maybe the structure or maybe what the function function is called by any dll or maybe called by any uh, a library for example if you are analyzing for example a, a unix platform right and usually, uh, this program itself, it doesn't run at this time, right? Because, of course, it's depending on the program that you can, for example, use in your analysis. But usually, it's more safe, right? Because it's not 100% safe. But usually, it's more safe because you not put um, in, in real time, right? The analysis, it's not in real time. That's a, a, a simple point here when you talk about the statistic analysis, right? The second step is dynamic analysis, just to explain for everyone that was watching now, right? The dynamic, the, the dynamic analysis is based as just in, in behavior, right? Uh, basically, it's the interactions that the malware uh, has with the, the, the files inside the, 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 the system's operation, or maybe what the, um, the document, maybe uh, this file can call it, but usually you put in this sample inside of the virtual machine, one environment controlled, right? You run the sample inside this environment and you can analyze this behavior, right? So usually you can autom uh, you can automatize that many this kind of uh, analysis, right? Because you can today you have many websites with uh, antivirus engi engines to try execute your suspicious files right and you or you can create you can use it as well the another concept called sandbox this is the basically it's a controlled environment that you can put your your sample inside this product for example you can run and you can look in the all um, dll's and many informations uh, are called but the big point the very important thing here is okay i put my sample inside this sandbox but uh, what the response, what the answer are receiving in report. I can't, uh, I can't understand what the 
the DLL are called because I understand very well in low level, in the kernel level or the user level, uh, you know, I can understand this because, you know, I have the automatization tool, but I need to interpret it. I need to translate, like a translate, not translate, but you need to understand what this report is talking, you know, that's very important thing because of this, that's my mission now here to try explain some bases for you, right? So, okay. So here I have a, a demo I will show in my machine, by the way. Okay, so I will try put here. I will call, I will pray to the, you know, to the, the, the Lords of Demo to try. Let me check here. I have here some samples, right? I have, by the way, here file Linux 32. Yes, this is the, a simple uh, executable file, right? So if I check here another in a wheel mach in my machine, let me check here what I have here. A simple file. Okay, let me check here. If I use file command, I can find here the, the in this case, it's a portable executable from uh, Windows, from Microsoft, right? So you have different uh, files here to understand if it's malicious or not. Let me check here. I have another different here. Um, let me check here. I have uh, a bill. Let me check here, bill. Bill file, bill. This is a PDF file, right? It's a PDF file. Okay. So, but here I would like to try uh, explain about the basis, right? Because we're gonna talk about file command, right? I don't know if you uh, read something about this, but what means what are, what are means file in this case? File determine file type. I know, Philip, but how this kind of tools or this tool in that case, in this case works. That's a, a, a simple and very important point, right? Because when you, when you put this command inside your machine, this uh, uh, file or this tool actually, we run or, or run in your environment and you show some answer, right? In the, in the, in the, in the screen. But how this tools works, that's, that's important because if you read here, if you read, here you can can read here the magic tests are used to check for files each data in particular fixed format maybe you can maybe you are thinking now and and, and maybe uh i don't i know Philippe is show me about the man of files but here you can understand something because here you can understand those format is defined in elf doc h so maybe here we have interesting information if you let me, for example, if you check here, uh, for example, if I put here, for example, no, no, you know, let me, oh yes, I will open, okay, so here you can, if you see here this information, right, that I was received here in the mail from file, you can read here. This file defined the standard elf types, structure, and macros, right? And here below you can read another information about the structure because here in the beginning you can read here the elf files header. This appears at the start of every elf file, right? You have here 16 bytes, the first array of the name eIdentity and you have the magic number and others information. So we have here, for example, the magic number. So what, are, what means this in this case, uh, magic number? Here you have the key, right? So these files have a magic number stored in particular place near the beginning of the file that tells the Unix operation systems, right? So what's what this means in this case, it's very simple. The file command has a database responsible to provide all this information to find all these, all those magic numbers in the beginning of the file, right? So here, if you, I will show you now here, for example, I have here the, um, I, I downloaded this, this, uh, this file, this file uh, code. To, to look inside this to show you this information, right? So here we can read, you can read many informations here of 
main information of this kind of database. For example, if you, for example, read the information of JavaScript, in this case here, okay? So JavaScript, let me show you for you here. JavaScript, we have here many informations in the beginning of the file. In this case, it is the magic number of the file. We have many rules here that you could use you uh, that basically this file command used to identify the file they are the file in this case if it's uh, executable or not right so let me show you some example now here i will create this file the name in our doc text 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 right um is it malicious Malicious. Let me write here. Okay, this is a simple question. I will read this information. In this case, they're perfect. Let me use file command here. It's really, really text file, right? Perfect. So, for example, if I manipulate the magic number information here, let me manipulate here. I will put some string here that I know what this information means i will change here and i use the file again dot text doc text and let me check here and here looking this incredible information now we have a python script in this case is as a executable file right so if it's executable i can call it i can call maybe python what do you think about it so i can call on not Python, Python text in this case. Text, because it's Python, right? If I use, let me read again this file. Yes, but we have a problem. Maybe you can think about it some, but the extension here is different, right? Just let me, um, because I have another Python here in the other representations, I will, okay, so I have a key here yes okay so let me change now here malware let me move malware text to the malware.py right so here we gonna pi so in this case we can run now just pi mm, maybe you need to have you need to have um the authorization the the, the privilege to to execute this kind of information maybe let me change here. Okay, so now let's Python again. And let's check, is the same error. Why did this happen? Because it's not a script Python, right? If you, for example, you can manipulate again uh, this information here. It's very interesting point. Another again. Let me move again and percent PDF trust uh, maybe slash or oh, oh, dash actually 1.9 and i will save here and i will clean and let me check here malware.py docpy it's a pdf document take a look at the very interesting you know that's a big point here uh maybe you can ask uh, so philip now the, the file command it's not conf it's not uh uh you know, it's not a confidence com command. I can use this kind of command. No, you need to use, right? Be but you need to understand all those bases, right? This is the very important thing. You never need, you never can uh, believe in the extension uh, because, of course, you, it's the same case when you talk about the strings, for example. If you see here the strings, the amount of the strings, for example, here, the strings command, right? So let me check here. It's strings common men string print the sequence of printable characters in file right so here's the the simple key the many many people never think maybe because in the beginning of the description uh, says for example for each file given you know strings print the printable character sequence that are at least four characters long because of this you when do you execute for example here um a string in strings that they maybe you execute for example in the beginning of this the many commands for example you you don't you you, you don't find for example the elf information or mz information on the pe information right for example here if you read here the xdamp any 
Let me check here. Any 32, um, the Linux 32, a bit less. Okay, in the beginning, you can you can read here the elf, right? So, but here you have uh, just three let three characters, not four in this case, right? So, if you try here, for example, let me change here. If you train, if you change, if you if you try, for example, run the strings um dash a putting in the linux let me put pipe here pipe the pipe less here and you put pipe less here and you if you try oops maybe i re receive some red horse here oh, of course i need to put the, the file correct yes so here if you put here in the beginning take a look here you you don't find here at the beginning the elf information because elf is just three characters, not four characters. That is important thing, right? This is all those bases, right? That's very important when you mention here, right? So we explain more than uh, elf now. So basically, when you talk about the structure about the elf or maybe PE portable executable, you can see in the pictures it's the similar form not exactly the same but very very similar because we have the same header you have the sessions here in the text or uh, and doc or dot dot doc oh my goodness you have the text you have uh, a or data you have the data and you and you have uh, many sessions header in the PA portable we have for example the the two uh, parts first, right? The header and the sessions. Of course, it's dividing you on other parts. And you have, for example, in, in, in inside the header, you have the DOS header when you can see the MZ information, the signature MZ, right? When basically it's responsible to the creator of this uh, kind of binary. And you have here the PE header when you can find the the signature, this information, and below you can see the sessions. Here is the information where the usually the attacker can put your malicious code, usually inside the session, docs text, right? And when you try to analyze any uh, artifacts, for example, you can find the UPX a compressed or maybe a packer uh, tools. This is a technique. Maybe many times the attackers can be using as many different attackers. Um, usually, the packer can encapsulate all the the sessions inside the one of this uh, packer, basic basically. And you can, when you use some tools to try and find some, any information, you will find, for example, the packer information. Right? You you, you don't you can see this information in the session, right? So, okay, so we talk about the P and ELF structure. Of course, it's very, very simple. Uh, we, I can't, uh, I don't have a time actually to explain all this uh, binaries because you know, uh, if you talk about the, for example, just a PE portable executable from Microsoft, man, we have a many, many hours to try explain and to try uh, goes to inside this all this information, right? So I will try to explain more than PDF structure because basically it's it's in four mainly parts. The header, it's may maybe it's basic basically it's the same when you talk about another binaries. We have always you have the header, right? You have the body, you have the cross reference table, and you have the trailer, right? So here we have the, all those structure. In the beginning of the file, you have the version number. It's the same information collected by file command. Do you remember when you execute the file command? You can read, you can read actually the uh, magic number of this information. You can find this information. You have the body, and inside this kind of body, you know, you have many reference inside of this body. You have the cross reference table here. And you can read here its locate location of object ethan the file for a random access what as what as what this the things means in this case is basically one structure referring another 
in structure or another object inside this bar in this case, right? In the trailer, it's the same thing. You have here a uh, location of the certain objects inside the body. That is, you have many connections of these parts of this structure, right? So here I will show you one of my, my analysis in a PDF file, right? To try and understand. I will use basically here, I used the PDF ID. It's very tools, it's very known tools uh, provided by DDA Stevens, right? This is basically, I think it's in, in installed in many Unix platform, but you can download this information in the blog website from DDA Stevens, as you can use this in Windows in Windows machines. Sorry, we have problem here with my demo. Let me try here. Okay, I will pause actually this, this demo because here we have all those informations. You have the header, you have 15 objects here, and you have the two streaming, you have the one trailer, one cross-reference table here, and you have one trailer, right? So below this two, we we can find this uh, informations. This is slash right in this information. All those inform is, all those slashes are inside of this object. That's a very interesting point because if you uh, see in the man of the PDF ID, you can note you can see this information that basically it's uh, is this tool is responsible to print many strings inside of the PDF, right? So here we have another interesting point. We have the encryption file, and you have here five Java script inside this PDF, you know? So we can think about it. What do you think? You have a JavaScript inside of the PDF file. Maybe it's a, it's a safer or malicious. You know, I, I don't talk about the reverse engineer here, just to try to interpret or to try and understand of this file, right? And here you can see another information. Open action, it's one. What this means in this case, open actions refer basically when the user receives the file and the user click in a file, in this case it's PDF file, and after that, and after that the file can execute something. In this case, we can see here, we have five JavaScript. We just need to understand what this, uh, or what this command represents in this case, right? So I will put uh, more, let me check here. Okay, so here I will use another uh, platform. In this case, it's a PDF run, right? It's um, another platform created by DJ Steven, PDF parser, right? Oh my goodness, we have um, uh, I do have many problems here with my, in this case, my finger, you know, because I am clicking in a mouse. But no, but but now I will try to show you the, the all those information in this case, right? Because I will pause the, the video to, to explain. As you can see here, this information, in the beginning, we can see the header, right? And here you can read the object one. If you remember when I explained about the body, about the cross-reference table, all those infer all those this parts of this PDF are connected one above another, right? Right. So here, for example, you have the object one referring to object two, object three, four, five, six, and seven. But you know, and I know that we have fifteen objects inside this file, right? So let's continue to uh, try understand. Here we can see the my goodness. Here we can see the JavaScript, but here we we can't we can't understand what this information means, right? So we need to try understand more. Here, as you can see, we have the option open action, as you explained before to you, right? The open action when the user click in this file, this file uh, will run someone or, or, or any JavaScript, but we don't know, right, uh, what this uh, JavaScript uh, maybe call it or maybe can call it, right? So let's continue to understand. We have object one and here I will put, okay, 
more above here. Object four, we have another reference here. We have a reference eight and reference nine, and we have a two more reference, in, right? So uh, you can see here more connectivity in the many objects inside the PDF, right? So here, another interesting thing, we have the object seven connected or referencing by um, object 10. You know, we are uh, growing up of this PDF file, right? And here, the object nine, we have the same case. We have the referencing the four because the four connected to the nine and the eight and the 11, right? So we can see many connections of the object inside this name of body, right? So here we have the, the, the object 10 connected to uh, 12. And here we have one first <coughs> interesting uh, information. Object 11, we have the contain extremely. In this case, uh, when this object has some strings, maybe you have a JavaScript inside this, or maybe you can have some exploit inside this. And you have this information flat decoded. It means uh, these are streaming are obfuscated, are closed inside this uh, flat decode. You need to decode this information, uh, by the way. So here, another information is to have object 12, it's connected to 13. And if you compare here, this streaming, it's much uh, uh, bigger than, uh, than, than another that we see, that we saw uh, later, right? If you compare this streaming, it's very, very high. The, the size, it's very high, right? When you compare here. So maybe the idea is to try to look in all those informations inside this object right we have here the object 14 and here the 15 and finish the file right so the next step is to try to look inside the object 13 right so in this case i will use another tool pdf tika in this case this tool it's not from <laughs> dda steven by the way so i will run the dump of this information and this uh, a key information uncompressed because i will uncompress all those information inside this pdf right because you remember i run the pdf parson and i i can uh, read all those run information in here we i can uncompress because i know inside of this streaming we have a flat decode information so now I am seeing here the JavaScript obfuscated. In this case, the attacker used the first technique, the obfuscation technique, right? Because I can see the evil parameters and I can try to find any information inside this obfuscated code, right? So here I will use uh, the nano, you know, I, could, I can use uh, VI maybe or another tools to edit all those informations and I will just uh, change any information. Here you can see many informations in JavaScript. So here we can find or you can try to read any information because you can, if you imagine, for example, we're going to talk about the JavaScript. Y JavaScript use usually uh, the, the, you know, the, the following it's a application, a web application page, maybe. So because of this, I will try to uh, desobfuscate this kind of code. So because I have the here the parameter, I will use in the script HTML, I will use in the document right to try read any information inside of this code, right? So I generate the payload.html and I will try to read if I find, for example, uh, any information inside of this JavaScript obfuscated, right? So basically, I will run now this code in a HTML page and I'll take a look all the what the inf <laughs> the in the interesting information that we find here. The variable payload. Do you know what's this means it's basically the packer or not the packer the package responsible to download 
uh, in the Wittmann machine, and this package is responsible to uh, respond this information to the attacker server, right? The, it's known, uh, the name is a CAC or command and controller, right? So take a look. In the first step, we find the, the PDF file. In this PDF file, we have a five JavaScript, but we have a, one of this Java, it's the bigger JavaScript, and this JavaScript had received the obfuscated technique, right? And after after that, I will I I, I needed to change all those information. I need to disobfuscate it of this code. And when I execute this information in a HTML page, I can find the payload responsible to download in the victim machine. So if you remember in the beginning of this analysis, when the user, maybe you, the victim in this case, click in the file, do you remember the open action? The next action of this file is to execute this JavaScript. In this case, it's, you know, it's obfuscated. So when the, the user or the victim click in this file, this is scripted, the JavaScript uh, will run in the victim and will download this payload that you can see in the, in the screen inside the victim machine, right? So in this case, I, I, was, I was thinking when I was uh, uh, doing this analysis, so if I have the payload, maybe I can try to find the CAC from the attacker, right? So I will continue to do my analysis in this case. So I have here some information inside this payload, right? So here I will use again my big friend, Nano. Maybe many people don't like this friend, but you know, it's in my case, it's simple. Oh, I could use again <laughs> Vino, VI or another uh, edit test. So if, if, if you see here, we have a very percent inside of this information here. When, he, when I look at when I look at all those uh, uh, percent, all those information, I can note, I can see here, no notes, I can see here the interesting information in this case. Here we have a, a UC2 based on a Unicode, you know, uh, information. It's it's almost different when you talk about the ASCII or, or ASCII. ASCII, it, it means a, a two by one bytes. When you talk about the Unicode, you use the two bytes, right? So here I have the 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 pure not pure but the the run data of this Unicode, right? So now I need to translate all this information. So I had the payload package, but when I see I I see another technique, the encode technique, right? So this the, the this payload is used with a, a uni um sorry it's used a Unicode encoding right i know it's very it's maybe confusing but take a look at this i have a payload package i have an information all those information receive a encode technique this encode technique is based in unicode right so basically as you can see here i just using the unix platform but maybe you can ask uh, or you can asking Philippe, but I use just Windows, but not a problem. You don't, you, you, however, you, you don't need to have a, a concern that's in this case, right? So here I use another platform, Mozilla by Bobby. It's, it's a similar platform. I have here the same code. I need to cut. Do you remember I need to cut this percent? Because I need to have the run uh, Unicode uh, information, right? The Unicode code right so here i have the unicode information and i can generate here the exa file binary this this tool is responsible to generate this kind of information after that i use another information uh, another tools created by dda steven short, short search executable to try find any http information because remember if i have the payload package probably this um package when after to download it in the Vitman machine probably this package uh, will make some request to the command and controller from attacker right so that's my idea when i to continue to do this investigation so when you as you can see here i found the ip from the attacker in this case the ip is based 
in Estonia, Europe, right? So this is information from the CAC, the attacker. I, I don't use it basically here, the reverse engineer, but we find the JavaScript obfuscated. We find the encode technique based in, in, in Unicode, right? Um, we've, we can learn about the, for example, the open action inside the PDF files. So we can learn about many informations, right? So if you have any question, I, I am available to you. This is my contact again. And one more time, thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. If you have any question, please let me know.